jump back on the wagon and, and ride it out. We're on chapter 42 and we've covered a lot of ground in, in the book of Revelation and there's still more to go. And um, I've learned so much up to this point and look forward to what else is uh, to be revealed because you know, we're talking about Re Revelation. And um, I heard about most of the stuff that, you know, the fire, the brimstone, all the destruction, but there's still more to come. That's uh, more good news. So um, today we're gonna talk about something that is pretty difficult, um, but we're gonna, uh, you know, just go on ahead and, and matriculate through the rest of the book and the rest of the chapter so that we can see what happens in the end. And we all know now that there is going to be a, a happy ending. <laughs> and uh, some of our um, members said they go to the end and read the end first so that they can, you know, enjoy the beginning. <laughs> that, that was a good idea, especially if we're reading this book. Uh, but we do know that there will be a happy ending. But uh, in between time, in the in, in the in between time, there is some some hard stuff that happens. And uh, today we're going to be talking about. Uh, some of those hard things, and um, the title of today is The Hard Truth. Um, but before we get started um, with today's lesson, are there any other announcements that anyone would like to make? And I was going to ask uh, Mama Johnson, you, are you there, Mom? Okay, maybe not. Maybe she's not there. Maybe I'll ask her to close us out with prayer. Um, other than that, maybe uh, Brother Elton, will you open this up in prayer? All right. Head. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we just say thank you. Thank you for all you have done. And Lord, you carried us this far, Dear Heavenly Father. We know this by the grace, by your grace and your mercy, dear Lord. We, yeah. we say thank you. Thank and you. as we move forward, dear Lord, we just a closer walk, a closer understanding, a better understanding of your word, dear Heavenly Father. Let's continue to. Mm -hmm. To move all fear all down, just continue to give you all the praise and glory of what's, what's happening and just give us the strength to endure during difficult times, the Heavenly Father, and just continue yeah. to know that you are still in control, the Heavenly yes. Father, that you just continue to pray for this nation as a whole, that we know there's many out there just disputing your word, but we're going to keep the faith and keep on believing it's in spite of the Heavenly Father. And just continue to pray for the, those who Less fortunate than having to follow those who only better affliction than the father, especially this past week. We saw this young man just mm. pass out on the field, and yeah. you know, it's your we thank you for keeping him, yes, and hold on, pray for his family, and pay for all those that, that that's going through, praying for him, family members, stuff like that, and just continue to, to just comfort him as you comfort us in these times. They have to follow, which is actually you just. We know your word gonna go forward and not gonna go forward. Yeah, we just yes. thank you for the encouragement. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for that prayer, Brother Elton. And um, I just want to play a uh, snippet of a song, you know, maybe one verse, but I thought it was fitting for today's lesson. And uh, you guys will be familiar with this one. Um but it is speaking directly towards what uh, today's lesson is. Um, and it's something that we've talked about um, periodically throughout this, this entire study. And is that, uh, you know, I, we pray that we'll all be ready, and, you know, not just us, because we're in a good space right now. We're uh, moving in the right direction. But we do, do know those who are not in the right space and place. And we pray that in the end, that everybody will, um, you know, be ready for when he returns, so. Can everybody hear?
Yes, yes, yes. This, that is my prayer. Pray Mary, who, who's the artist? Who's um, that's the Miss. No, excuse me, Chicago Mass oh, Choir. Oh, okay. Chicago Mass, Mass Choir. And it's the title is. We'll be I pray we'll all be ready. Okay. I pray we'll all be ready. I love it. Yeah. And yeah, so uh, we're gonna be playing on a Sunday. Amen. 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 <laughs> okay. I love it. Yes, and uh, as I said, this is one of the um, songs that you know I, I play all the time in my rotation. But when I read this, I immediately thought that you know um, I pray we'll all be ready. Yes, yes. It's gonna come a time when we all come when there's time is coming to an end on Earth, mm -hmm. and our reading tells us about the Lord, our good God, still trying to bring his children home. And some people have prepared themselves and some have hardened their hearts to where they're not gonna be ready. And unfortunately, their fate is to experience the horrors of the tribulation. So, um, the title of this chapter is uh, The Hard Truth, and it comes from our uh, book, When Christ Appears, and we're on chapter 42. Um, we've matriculated through the majority of the book, and we still have some to go. But this is uh, one of the hard truths, is that not everybody is going to be ready when he mm -hmm. returns. But it is our job for every and everyone's individual job to be ready when he returns. And he is going to return. <laughs> and that's a promise. And mm -hmm. um, for those who aren't ready, they're going to have to experience God's wrath. Mm -hmm. And that's the hard truth. Yes. Um, this chapter is a uh, covering chapter 15, Revelation chapter 15, in all the verses, one through eight. And I'm going to go on ahead and read from our book on page 168, Revelations 15 verses one through three. It lays the foundation to what is, what is occurring in this chapter. On page 168, Revelations 15 verses one through three three says, I saw in heaven another great and marvelous sign, seven angels with the seven last plagues, last 
because with them, God's wrath is completed. Mm. And I saw what looked like a sea of glass blowing with fire and standing beside the sea. Those who had been victorious over the beast and its image and over the number of its name. They held harps mm. given them by God and sang the song of God's servant Moses and of the Lamb. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just are your ways, King of the nations. And while it's hurtful for us to think that such terrible things are going to unfold, as we just read right here, it's just because we serve a just God. And he's given individuals every opportunity to get it right with him. But some still haven't accepted the free gift of eternal life. But that's what it is. And that's where we find ourselves in the beginning of today's reading. The wrath of God began, began with the seven seals and it will be finished with the seven last plagues, which are the seven bodies. In chapter 15, it is an introduction to these last plagues. The sea of glass was before God's throne in Revelations chapter four and verse six. Also is where it says, also in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. Now we see this same image in today's reading as the final judgment has finally come. We learn in Revelations 15 and two that the victory over the beast is won by those who believe and have faith in Christ. The saints who will remain the saints who remain will experience what Revelation 2 and 7 says, where it says, whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches, to the, ones who is, the, to the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Those who endure to the end have what 1 John 5 and 4 says, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. In verse five, it says, who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God. So in addition to having faith in Christ and refusal to submit to the antichrist, their, they, their source of victory is over the, it comes over the beast because of their faith and because of their refusal. The same principles apply to us in 2023. We too must keep the faith and fight against the wiles of the enemy and those who serve him because we do have those on earth right now who are serving and acting, and acting out the, excuse me, who are serving and acting on behalf of the enemy. But, pray, but the praise report for us is that we just as the saints in the last days will have the ultimate victory. We will have eternal life. So brothers and sisters, keep the faith. It will be handsomely, pay, it will handsomely pay off with an eternal treasure. The song of Moses that is being sang by those in chapter 15 who have the victory over the beast is similar to the song which was sang in Exodus 15. And I did put in my notes, you know, all of the uh, lyrics that are in Exodus 15 and 1, and I suggest you to go back, but I won't belabor the time by going and reading the entire um, song, but the song uh, depicts the retribution and justice God serves his enemies and reveals the greatness of his works, his ways, his worth, and his worship. The, the deliverance of Israel from Egypt prefigured the deliverance of the tribulation saints from the antichrist. So it is the same as that. In other words, it's the same God and the same act that saved the Israelites from Jesus that will save those saints in the last days from the antichrist. It's actually the same God who deli delivered the Israelites from the grip of the Egyptians who delivers these saints from the grip of the antichrist. The remaining believers worship God for his power and his righteousness, despite the constant attack from the Antichrist and his imps. 
The saints believe in God's power and his ability to save them from the terror of the Antichrist. Because if you don't have the mark of the beast on you, life is very difficult in the last days. So we must ask and answer the same question for ourselves as those in the last day have to answer for themselves. Do I believe in God's power and ability to save me? See, the reward for this faithfulness is that they and we will receive eternal life in the new Jerusalem because our great God is still calling his children to come home in our day and he will still be calling them to come home in the last days. All nations will come and worship him in the millennial kingdom for God's judgment at this point in chapter 15 is coming upon the earth. The time has come and the seven angels prepare to administer the last seven tribulation judgments of Christ with these seven vials, as in Revelation 16 and one, where it says, then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, go pour out the seven bowls of God's wrath upon the earth. Now these vials are actually shallow bowls that are typically used for pouring libations. In 2 Chronicles 28 and 17, it says the weight of pure gold for the fork, fork sprinkling bowls and the pitchers, the weight of gold for each gold dish and the weight of silver for each silver dish. So that's a description of what these bowls or these vials may look like. Um, in Jeremiah 52 and 18, they also, it says, they also took away the pots, shovels, wick trimmers, sparkling bowls, dishes, and all the bronze articles used in the service temple. So these are tools or bowls or vials or pictures that were used in ancient days that now contain God's wrath, which is about to be poured onto the earth. In this hour, the bowls are full of his wrath, and it is described in 2 Thessalonians 1, chapter 7, verse through 9. Excuse me, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. Verse 7 says, and give relief to those who are troubled and to us as well. This, was, this will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in a blazing fire with his powerful angels. Verse 8, he will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Verse nine says, they will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. See, there's a terrible fate for anyone who shuts out the Lord or who is shut, shut out from the Lord. And we learned earlier in the book of Revelation that our great God has the right to judge because he is the eternal one. He is the almighty. And remember, he's the only one who can release the judgment because he is the sacrificial lamb. In John 3 and 16, it says, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And as we learn, he is also the lion, which will impose his judgment because he is the only one who made the sacrifice and he is the only one worthy of um, impo imp imposing judgment. The temple represents, uh, in chapter 15, the presence of God himself, for it is God himself who is orchestrating the events unfolding on earth. The smoke in chapter 15 is like the incense that filled the holies of holies and the tabernacle in the Old Testament. And it was also described in earlier chapters in Revelation. In chapter 15, until the seven plagues are finished, no one is able to enter into the temple. So the time for intercession, as we read in this chapter, is past. Now God's judgment will be complete. Again, one would think that those who remain would have had an aha moment and returned to the Lord. But that's not the case, as there are those who harden their heart even more as the wrath of God bears down upon them. And I pray that none of the non-believers that I know have cemented their heart in here in 2023 into the pit of the evil one, rather that they will reconsider the softness and the kindness yes. that is revealed by God and will give them their salvation. Think about it, that if 
Jesus Christ came back today, the events described in Revelations chapter 15 and 16 would happen seven years from now. If the rapture occurred today, there would be friends and family and loved ones who would be left behind on the earth to endure the seven bold judgment. And when I read that, and when I wrote that, there are a couple pictures of people in my mind, who a couple of people who came to mind. And like our song said, I pray that we'll all be ready when he returns. Yes. But as Dr. Jeremiah states in our reading, the truth is this, that those who refuse to drink the cup of God's salvation must drink from the bowls of his wrath. Psalm 75 and 8 says, in the hand of the Lord is a cup full of foaming wine mixed with spices, and he pours it out, and all the wicked of the earth drink it down to its very dregs. This is the hard truth that Dr. Jeremiah chose for the title of this chapter. Those who refuse to drink the cup of God's salvation must drink from the bowls of his wrath. Mm. And that was a repeat statement because I want everybody to get it in their spirit and their mind that we still should be trying to reach out to those who have not yet accepted Christ. Yeah. And I don't want to dwell on the negative, but there are certainly those in my life who would have had who would have to endure the seven bold judgments if they don't have a change of heart. Mm -hmm. I pray we will all be ready for his return. Mm -hmm. I pray that my life, my belief, and my faith would spare me, but I am not the judge. Mm -hmm. It is up to me, like an Olympic athlete, to impress the judges. And it is up to each individual to impress the judge as well. And I pray that the life that I live is pleasing to God and is acceptable in his sight. Oh, how I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. But I know that I won't be in that number unless I turn and to turn to, to Christ, who is our salvation. In verse three, the tribulation saint sings the song of God's servant Moses. And um, in Romans 11 and 33, it says, Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom of the knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgments and his paths go beyond tracing out. And that song depicts some of the retribution of God's justice and insert justice of God, excuse me, let me say that again. The song depicts the ret retribution and justice God serves his enemies and reveals the greatness of his works, his will, his work, and his worship. How can we save ourselves and save others from the judgment that is coming down upon the earth? How can we save ourselves from the terrible, how can we save ourselves from the terror that faces us if we don't accept God's will? None of us like to think about the terrible events that will unfold in the end days. And it's the same fire and brimstone message that preacher, preachers used to teach when I was growing up. None of us want to think about those terrible events, but we have to understand that even if we don't want to think about them, it doesn't stop them from occurring. And while those preachers in back in my days when I grew up coming up would have done, in my opinion, much better preaching about the good news that we have discovered during the Bible study, it is still the truth that there will be terrible times in the last days. And there will be, there will be terror upon those who don't accept the Lord's salvation. The end days are terrifying, but ignoring them will make them less likely to occur. Dr. Jeremiah tells us on page 169 that there are those in our generation who have lost sight of the holiness of God. And his justice, his righteousness are a part of his holiness. So when we acknowledge the holiness of God, we have to acknowledge his justice, his righteousness, 
and accept that his judgment shall come because he is the lion and the lamb. Therefore, we should consider the kindness and the sternness of God. In Romans 11 and 22, it says, consider therefore the kindness and the sternness of God, sternness to those who fail, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. God has been expressing his loving kindness and extending his mercy and grace to mankind from the beginning. And he will continue to do so all the way to the very end. God Almighty, even in the final moments of the tribulation, is still demonstrating his mercy and grace. Yeah. And Dr. Jeremiah points out that his heart is to be reconciled with all that he has cre created. So in the end, those who are just are the people who have stubbornly and utterly refused him because he gave us all and he gives us all a chance to turn to him. Despite all that is happening, they have made it clear that they don't want his forgiveness. They're going down with the ship. And I pray that we will all have sense enough to abandon ship if we are faced with eternal damnation that an unbeliever faces. And that we will encourage unbelievers to abandon ship if they are faced with eternal damnation wow. in the end. But there are those who don't want love, who don't want the love, the kindness, the mercy, and the grace offered to them. Therefore, finally, God takes their disregard at face value. And Dr. Jeremiah teaches that teaches us that the plagues in Revelation 15 are translated as wounds. <laughs> So uh, I can say that, you know, it being like a wound is almost like a lashing. You know, if we're getting a spanking, we get a lash. So the Lord is giving those non-believers lashes or wound, giving them wounds because of their disobedience. The Lord is about to wound the entire earth for the last time before the final judgment. But here's a place to be encouraged and shout hallelujah because there will be a company of saints who will become Christians during the tribulation. They stood the test of the evil one and will have the victory promised to those who love the Lord. And I am encouraged because when I think about the loved ones who don't believe, there's still hope because as long as they're still alive, they still have a chance. But as we learn in the in chapter 15, there will come a time when it is too late. But God is always willing to give us a chance despite our disobedience. And as I close again, like our set opening prayer says, I pray that we all, will all be ready when he returns. And I love the prayer and I'll end with the prayer that Dr. Jeremiah had on page, I believe it's 171 where he says, Lord Jesus, today I recommit to pray for friends and loved ones who don't yet know you as their savior. Give me the courage, the sensitivity, the opportunity to share your gospel with them before it is too late. Because I pray that we'll all be ready when he returns. So that concludes my... Um, summary of today's reading and um oh man what happened and now we can um open up the floor for today uh for comments and for commentary about today's reading thank you thank you larry thank you Let's see. Yeah. Another eye opener. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Hard truth. My, my, my. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was awesome, Larry. I have one question. Yes. Um, you described the bowls and what it was made of. Where did yes. you? That. Um, a study Bible of mine. Um, you want the the, the um the verses? 
Because I believe one yeah, of them the Chronicles. Uh, let me get. Let me get. Okay. Uh -oh. Yeah, um, the vials are actually shallow bowls typically used for pouring libations. And it was described in 1 Chronicles 28 and 17. It says the weight of pure gold for the forks sparkling bowl and for, for the forks sparkling bowls and pitchers. And the weight of the gold for each gold dish, the weight of silver for each silver dish. And it was just a description of one of the uh, pictures or one of the bowls that were used um, in the um, in the tabernacle back in the day and during those times in, in First Chronicles. And then uh, uh, uh -huh. 52 and 18, it says they also took away the pots, the shovels, wick trimmers, sprinkling bowls, dishes, and all the bronze articles used in the temple service. So I just kind of looked um, around and found some descriptions of the pictures or the bowls that may have been used, you know, in um, during this time. Okay, I'm sorry, Larry, I didn't get the second verse. Jeremiah 52. Okay. And 18. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, thanks. It's, it was, uh, it was an awesome lesson and really detailed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I took notes like from um, verse four, uh, where God was constantly sending witnesses to tell um, the people to repent. Mm -hmm. he, you know, he was never giving up. He was constantly sending people. And everyone that goes wherever they go is because of the actions that they did. It's not the actions that he did, it's the actions that they did. And and he really believed when he said, when they asked how many times should I forgive my brother? And mm. it was seven times, seven times, seven. Well, he not only talked to talk, but he walked the walk too. Yeah. Yeah. He did way more than that. You know, so he was a perfect example of um, someone forgiving and someone giving a person another chance and another chance. Mm -hmm. Wherever a person goes to spend their eternal life, that's a decision that they made. Right. Um, uh -oh. I, and I like in Ezekiel 18, um, 31 and 32, he was telling the Israel, cast away from you all transgressions, which you have committed, and get yourself a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die for, O house of Israel? And I love this part right here where he said, for I take no, I mean, I take no pleasure in the death of ones who die, says the Lord. Therefore, turn and live. He's letting them know where you are going and you're going to a place where I don't want you to go. I take no pleasure in this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was telling them all the way until the last second. Yeah, I think I'm the host again. Did he just leave? He dropped off. I think he's I saw of something on top of mine saying you're the host. I think he, he just the screen went um, black. Oh, and okay. that automatically went to you, Tina. Yeah, because the one off, maybe it's set up so you automatically get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> oh, I'm curious because it happened last time too. Mm -hmm. He probably signed back on in a minute. Yeah. You may you might have been the uh first person on after oh yeah after that too. Larry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it but, wasn't anything that you did that was so great. <laughs> Stop. 
<laughs> Don't get the big head on us. <laughs> All right. I, I was. He brought me down. I had to humble myself now. Uh, <laughs> Thought I was all that in a bag of barbecue chips. <laughs> oh, but, but that's that was that's pretty much it. You know, I've seen that from Genesis to Revelation, he has forgiven time and time and time again. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and so I truly from this what this <coughs> I truly believe where you go, that's a decision that you made. Yes. Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. it. I think I'll wait and see if he comes back before I start. I hope they didn't lose power because of the storm. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got text Marisa. Text. text him and see if he lost power. Oh, she said the power went out. It's back. Oh, oh yeah, right. they lost power. She said the power yeah. went out. It's back on, but the internet will take a minute to start. Oh, right. okay. okay. Give a minute, yeah. That's what I was wondering because we've got a pretty good storm going right now. Mm. Uh, yeah. Now, let me now ask so Martha did. Down. Did anybody get the lesson when Larry sent it? No. I did not. No. Okay, I didn't either. I was going to ask you to send it to me if you got it, because it was a rich lesson that he gave. Yeah, and I really would like a copy. No, I didn't get it. Yeah, it may be due to the storm. <laughs> I didn't get it either. Yeah. You're right, yeah. Jules. It could be that. Yeah, it was send us a copy too. Yeah, maybe you can send it to us subsequently because it's. Yeah. Really thorough, really a good lesson that he put together. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would I'd appreciate it because I did not come very prepared tonight. It's been, <laughs> <laughs> it's been it's, really, this new year. <laughs> I found his family just left uh about 7 30. Wow. And you know, the the whole time, you know, there's the people here so I've not been able to get a corner and just go in it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Lisa, well, this is that's another good lesson. And that was not mm -hmm. a complaint, by the way. Mm -hmm. That was not a complaint that they were here. I loved having them here. <laughs> wow. 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 Amen. Amen. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah. Let me go plug them. Let me go find my plug so my computer won't go out. Okay. Yeah. I borrowed Joyce's before we came on because I had mine and I don't know where in the world I put it. I had it in my hand getting ready for this class and I put it down somewhere. Yeah. Mine is at a quarter right now, Larry Marva. I have about 50. Yeah, oh, yours goes uh, on pretty quick. Uh, Larry said the Wi Fi has not be started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, did he say Jewel? Larry said his wife. He keeps him one day. Everybody should have it on the phone. He said my power just went out and why trying... has not restarted. Trying to rejoin on my phone. Yeah, I just got that too. George, you need it because I'm 61% now. Yeah, I am very low. Okay, I'll run it down there. Okay. I'll walk it down there. <laughs> 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 no. well, oh, um, I can tell tell you that we had um two family members hospitalized over the few last no. few days. 
Wow. A nephew who came from Atlanta was rushed to the hospital the day after, the night after. And his was uh, a lot of uh, vomiting, and it turned out that he was badly dehydrated. But he was able to be restored to the point that he went back to Atlanta the next day on um, on Friday. His sister mm. came all the way because his wife is on dialysis, and he wanted to get wow. back to get his wife her treatment. So everything is going well. He, he's been com communicating with us, and he's doing great. Oh, yeah. good, good. Well, um, oh, Larry, if they continue on, I will join ASAP. Okay. ASAPH. Oh, that H must be a, ty be a typo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was going to, I'll go next and then. Okay. You know, I, I read where on, uh, the, uh, the author said, read uh, chapter uh, verse one through eight. That eighth verse is a doozy. Yes. Man. I agree. And, yeah. And I started reading that. And then they're talking about uh, the smoke filling the temple and, and no one is able to enter. You know? Yeah. And, and no one can enter mm -hmm. uh, because during that time, uh, God has cut, cut them off. From, in, from having an intercession with him. It's mm -hmm. too late. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's making a decision. And it's like, uh, you know, when you're in the room and you close the door, you're trying to make a decision. You don't want no interruption. Nobody changing your mind or nothing. <laughs> and, and, and he's ready uh, because now he's thinking, I, I given you chance after chance after chance. I sent my son. He died on the cross and still wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, how many warnings? No, this is it now. Earth is about to receive its wrath on my on behalf. And and then and, and 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 this judgment that he's about to give, as Tina was saying, is self-inflicted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because his, as we said, his judgment is just. Just, yes. So the infliction now is because people did not want to let go of their worldly possessions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the word says, um, word says uh, the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and is it all is it also saying that they it his glory is there now? Yes. So, it's not mm -hmm. like, it's not like the cloud. It's right. Like he the, can't, yeah. Right. So he can't stand sin. And so these people are not even qualifiable to be in his presence. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's what I'm. I'm seeing what we, you when you took me there. I saw it because the uh, from the glory of God when you were reading it. Mm -hmm. I looked at the little footnote and it yeah. took us to Thessalonians fifteen three, I believe something. No, that wasn't it. No, Second Thessalonians one nine. I I can't find it now, but anyway. Right. It's like the glory of God is present, so they are no longer worthy to even be in no that. No longer place. worthy. No, no longer worthy. worthy. Yeah. You know, just like when the cloud and he went in the temple, uh, Moses had to leave everyone. No one Every could go to the temple. Amen. The Amen. But the smoke is not like the cloud that God was harmonious and bringing everyone together. Right. You know, this is the anger. This is also the mm -hmm. smoke of the mortars. This is uh, the smoke of the prayers of, uh, of, the, uh, of the incense that people sent up. This, uh, okay. smoke this smoke represents God's wrath. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so, uh, and, and that's what it said. No one is able to enter because there's no more chances. Mm -hmm. you know, wow. 
it, it's, it's, you know, like, like you said, oh, mama, give me one more chance. No, mm. listen, you're going to get the whipping now. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take this cord to Joyce. I'll be right back. All right. So that that was so I did, my take. I'm on. back on you guys I'm on my phone. Yeah, we, man. Power back. Well, yeah, the power is back temp right now. You know, um, yeah. We okay. just internet just hadn't rebooted, so I'm on my phone now. So yeah, that okay. what the day that happened? Uh, Saturday. Saturday when the power went out here, huh? Yeah. yeah. Hey, let us, that's all. You don't while have you're to go any right further. Now. Keep going next. <laughs> good, job, good job larry what okay. i what are things that um i really like that you says in your presentation is that you want to be you want to impress god mm -hmm. <laughs> because you know like when we go to a job interview mm -hmm. we want to impress that person yes want to we, we want them to see the best of us that's what we want god to see about us the best that we have yeah. Yeah. That the, best, uh, the best that we have to offer him so that he can accept us and also yeah. what you mentioned about trying to bring still trying to bring people to him as i say a couple of lessons ago keep doing the job being disciples trying to gain these people that are oh dear that we know that they're still doing things that they shouldn't be doing you know mm -hmm. they'll talk keep talking to them so that they can realize that this is serious this, this that's coming is serious yeah. and there and that once those of us that in that path we can't turn back we have yeah. to be keep that straight line yeah. mm -hmm. stay focused <clears throat> mm -hmm. Good job, good job. Thank you, thank you, Pia. Yeah. Um, I'm not auntie, I'm Tia. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> mommy. <laughs> both, you're both. <laughs> I'm learning. Yeah. I'm learning. Yeah, good job. Thank you. I, um. Yeah, I, I like that, you know, almost like we have to impress the judges. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, it's, it's, it's the truth um, that, you know, our actions have to be acceptable in his sight. Yes. And yes. or pleasing to him. If they're, if they're not, then, you know, we'll get, get the results from that. Now, yeah. in that, it doesn't, he doesn't expect for us to be perfect. And <laughs> that's one thing that non believers have a hard time wrapping their head around. Is that that there have been um, some there have been people in the past who said if you don't do this or if you do that then you're gonna you know you ain't gonna make it to heaven you know you can't make it to heaven or you're gonna be damned. But what I've learned from my own study, not from what I've heard from someone else, is that he doesn't expect perfection. Mm -hmm. All he accepts expects for us to do, as we've been learning in this study, is that you just have to believe. If yep. you believe, mm -hmm. then you will have access. If you believe, yeah. then you'll uh, have eternal, you can uh, receive eternal life. Mm -hmm. And um, that's hard for some people to believe or to accept because they've been told otherwise in the past. And I think that's a mistake that some uh, old school traditional uh or fundamental, excuse me, not to but fundamental Christians have said that, you know, they take it as uh, the Lord's word as um, little, but it's not literally that he says he expects you to try to be holy just like he is, but he knows that we're going to fall short of the glory. Because we can. He also says that. Yeah, yeah. He, he, know, he, he knows we're going to fall short of the glory. So with that being said, he just wants us to believe and make an effort to do so. And if we yep. make that effort, then we've done enough. We've done enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's up to us to give the best that we have to offer. Mm -hmm. And when we don't give the best we have to offer, then that it convicts us. 
and tells us that, wow, I, man, I might not, you know, it kind of makes us nervous and encourages us to, to do better. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's good, good title, good, good lesson. It's a lot. I mean, you know, just broke it down real well in terms of the hard truth. Amen. Um, it, there it, is. it takes a while. <laughs> it's hard for people to, to the truth to sink in and and yeah. you, know, to, you know, let that in the book it was saying that uh in the first what 169 in the end that who judge are the people who have stubbornly utterly refused him. They have made it clear that they do not want do not do not want his forgiveness. They do not want mercy or grace. Mm -hmm. even when it's offered to them. Mm -hmm. And right. so finally, he takes them at their word. I mean, it's just, you know, it's something, it's, I mean, we just got to stand our ground and be patient and and, and move forward. But mm -hmm. uh, like you said, you know, there's going to be some people, out there, a lot of people out there that don't want to hear the truth. If they yeah, hear the yeah. truth, they're still going to refuse what, what was said in the Bible, even though they've been taught. I mean, you know, and with what I job is just keep, you know, like I said, that's the uh that's your, the sand off the sandals to keep on going. And and you know, and I remember in the uh, what was that I think Matthew 25 talked about ten virgins. You know, five was ready, five wasn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like the world is now, you know, they party and and not receiving this word and, and it's been too long. All right. You know, when is he coming back? Y'all been talking about that since my grandma's days. So, <laughs> you know, they still, but but the word is, you know, they, they you know, the people are going to be falling asleep. Mm -hmm. And, I, and, I, and I, I believe in, was that he had been late 90s or early 2000s, a bishop was talking about there is no heaven. I mean, a prominent bishop. I used to listen to him on TV and all the time. And, you know, all of a sudden he just came out and said, there is no heaven. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, uh, and that was in the early, like I said, two, early 2000s, at least early mm. late 90s. And it's been 23 years already, maybe longer than that. But I'm just saying, just people are still preaching that same gospel. Mm -hmm. There is no hell. I mean, there is no hell. Mm. You know, and you know that I, now I can, you know, when I'm thinking about it, now, I can see how many people are there still around after the tribulation because there's so many people. That's, don't believe mm -hmm. there's a hell. Mm -hmm. You know, hell is real. But exactly. at the same time, we studying it, but there's so many people bypass this uh, chapter and bypass, you know, talking, preaching about hell. At one time, you can't even, you, at all the time you, on TV, you talk, they talk about hell, heaven and hell. But now some stations uh, ban you from mentioning the word hell. So, wow. I mean, you know, you can't preach. You can preach prosperity, but you can't preach hell. Yes. Because yeah. you're scaring the, uh, the donors and, the, you know, <laughs> their holders and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, the truth is as scary as at the same time. It's real. And, you mm -hmm. know, this generation now don't want to be scared. Everybody want to counsel everything. But God is still the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We just mm -hmm. got to remember that. Because the world we live in now is... Council culture, God coach, council God, and everything is peachy rosy. And just keep living your life best way you can. And everything, you know, everybody going to heaven. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I mean, that's the way this, this world we live in now. Mm -hmm. yeah. As we study it and know that God is real, His wrath is real, His judgment is real. So we just gotta stay, keep up. Uh, Keeps uh, moving forward. Yeah. Wait, less. Mm. Yes, no, right on, that's right on. Oh, I, I know that bitch. I don't remember if I should know his name. Should I say his name? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> so it's I can't so listen to it. Years. Oh, Carlton <laughs> Pierce. That's his name. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, oh. that was in the 90s. Yeah, that was in the 90s. He said it was no. I, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't, you know, I mean, he was a prominent preacher. I used to like to watch him all the time. Yes. You know, uh -huh. 
Matter of fact, there's a Netflix uh, story about him. You'd be on TV and all in the mm -hmm. radio station. But, mm -hmm. yeah, but yes. I, I saw the story about him. When he, no, did, and okay. he lost a lot of members. Yeah, he went from over 5,000 to, he still had a, a few hundred still followers. That's, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah I, saw, I saw that too, Mama Jordan. Mm -hmm. You know what, yeah, what really jumped out at me uh, was, first of all, Larry, I really enjoyed your presentation. I liked the song that you selected. Because mm -hmm. it was so very appropriate. Mm -hmm. In fact, I immediately jumped on YouTube and found it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that yes. second paragraph that says, in our generation, we have lost sight of the holiness of God. We yes. have lost mm -hmm. his justice, his righteousness. Consider, therefore, the kindness and sternness of God. I've been reading... Um, Senator Warnock's latest book, A Way Out of No Way. And I'm almost at the end. So today is the last chapter and the second and the after last and the last chapter. He spoke a lot about the working poor. And, um, you know, the injustice of the system that because these people have a job, that they're okay. But the fact is that a lot of them that have jobs can't even afford mm -hmm. to pay rent, to live somewhere. So a lot yeah. of the people that are on the streets that are homeless, they are working, but they just mm -hmm. can't afford it. And the state of uh, Georgia, where you know he uh, represents, they have a lot of these laws that he says he's watched you know, year after year that these um, po politicians vote against laws that will help these people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, that stubbornness, you know? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. um, and, and I read this and I thought, this is talking about some of those people. Mm -hmm. you know, who they see people that Medicare and Medicaid that are, can't even afford healthcare, some of them, you know? And he yeah. spoke about a woman who was a, a um, emergency or triage nurse and she gave down came down with an illness that caused her to have to leave her job and of course she couldn't get anything mm -hmm. to make ends meet and even though she was working at restaurants and what have you even though she and her husband both worked they mm -hmm. still could not make it and so she mm -hmm. was depending on like you know um uh, uh Christian clinics that offer service for the poor to help her, you know, and um, God, in all of this, God is still just. Mm -hmm. He's given all of these people a chance to redeem themselves mm -hmm. in every way that he can, they can, and mm -hmm. will not relent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Larry, before you came on, came back on, um, I had asked everyone if they had gotten the lesson and we didn't. So I was I was expressing, I need to express it directly to you that uh, this was a wow of a lesson. It was powerful. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a lot out of it. I was unable to prepare myself tonight. Mm -hmm. And so I was spent trying, tr I was trying to stand on your every word. I was <laughs> out of it because Kari and everybody was here. I didn't get much sleep uh, during this week. But I am so grateful that you wrote it up the way you did. And I really, really, really still want my copy. <laughs> so, okay, I'll yeah. make sure. Yes, if you could please try again to get it out. Your <clears throat> son said they think it could be because of the power, the, the weakness. Yeah. Yes, good. Mm -hmm. Maybe it didn't come through, but none of us got it. Okay. You know, I'll but, rescind it. Right. When we were talking, um, uh, I, I was listening to Alton and he was speaking about, he said the word believe a lot. And I think that's the, the I agree with him that that's the, 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 the crust of it, that not a non-believer 
I would think is a little different in God's eye than a believer who sinned. Mm -hmm. wow. The opportunity to come back to repentance. And some of these people who are still <laughs> in there and not coming over are truly non-believers. They're truly people who have chosen another way. And today we may not have the way of um, uh, making the choice. Yes, we do have it to <laughs> the choice to follow the other person. People do make that choice, but we may also um, choose other things that become our idols mm -hmm. that we turn to rather than turning to God. Yeah. Remember, and that, 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 what, what God said is that um, uh, in, in John 3, 16, he speaks about anyone who believes, anyone who believes. And so at the end, he's dealing with those who don't believe that are still being left behind. But he gives them so many opportunities to change and to become believers. Before he did that, what we, what we read last week when we talked about the reaping you know, in the separating of the 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 uh, the ones who were non-believers from the others. But um, when I think about the magnitude, the length of time, the length of time, Alton was saying, sometimes the guys say, well, man, you're talking about that heaven thing. What about, have you been hearing about that stuff since my grandmother was alive, you know? But when you yeah. think about that, think about how many years we've been hearing about it. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and uh, that's that's time that the Lord gave us. Mm -hmm. That is plenty of time. And it doesn't yeah. for some people because they still hang on to not believing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the yeah. power of that lesson. That you yes, you. Minister Johnson. Great lesson. My mind is gone. Just going so many things that I just try to um, I just try to keep it to one but this chapter is like only eight verses <laughs> but there's so many things that puzzle me one is chapter 15 talks about the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb, Exodus chapter 15, the very mm -hmm. first song in the Bible mm. written by Moses, the great deliverer. Won't go any further on that. Secondly, the people that come in from the tribulation and they're singing the song have harps and I think, and I'll have to look this up, that these are the only times I we have seen harps in the hands of anyone but the 24 elders. Mm. Not sure of that. I'll have to look that other up for, for the confirmation. And then thirdly, the allusion to the tabernacle in the wilderness. Uh, because the censors, of course, the vows of censors set on the altar of incense in that tabernacle, I believe somewhere in probably Exodus 25, but again in Exodus 30 and uh, other parts of Exodus talks about that. Of course, that was the pattern. And this, of course, is the all time paradigm. This is the temple in heaven, the paradigm from which all other temples were built, including Solomon's temple. And Herod tried to build a, it might have, Herod's temple might have been the most expensive, but it was the most man made too. Um, but then, um, and lastly, because uh, I want to keep this short, Dr. Jeremiah brings up probably the most important point in this. We, the Christians will not be here, mm -hmm. but there will be people. And again, I have to refer back to Exodus, like Pharaoh who refused to let the people of God go who hardened his heart and God left 
chalked him up to his own narcissistic personality disorder ruled by Satan to his own special brand of madness. Uh, there will be people who just will not accept God, but should that prevent us from doing everything within our God-given power precepts and gifts from trying to win them over? Oh no, because we never know. We don't know who those people are who will guard and their hearts like that. And so it behooves us. God's arms are still wide open. And if any man, if any man would accept Jesus Christ as his savior and repent, God's arms are wide open. And that is the message that we take into the world. Yes. Because at any, until, 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 until the day that he pours his wrath out upon the earth, they have that little time frame that they can be saved. And I like Dr. Jeremiah's question because it's very challenging. Uh, do you know anyone who will be alive in seven years, of course, in seven years to come? We do know some people who will be alive. And it hurts me to think about people that I love. That's more than people that I don't even know or grandchildren that I don't even have or have grandchildren and great grandchildren too. Mm -hmm. But there are some more mm -hmm. that I will have and may never meet. And it hurts me to know that some of those could be lost. So we must do. It is our challenge. It is it is what we have to do as being commissioned by God to take that word, to take his love to everybody that we know. So thank you. I have more things I'm mulling over in my mind, but those were just a few. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those are good points. Powerful points. Yes. I just want to say you for that wonderful lesson which you gave us. You took eight verses from Revelation 15 and really mm -hmm. gave us a complete explanation of what it talks about. Mm -hmm. And uh, all in all, at least at the end of it, you brought out the point that we still have time to repent. Mm -hmm. Yes. Regardless of what's going on with what we did, we still have time to repent because God has given us one last chance. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The way you explained it all, and then you mm -hmm. came right back to that point. It's a very good lesson that we got this evening. And the one thing I've said, like what my wife has been saying about us being disciples to bring people on to God and not lead them astray. So Larry, thanks again. Thanks again. I'm sorry we weren't able to have the book with us or anything like that, but you know, being on vacation and everything, we just I forgot to bring the book just in case I had a chance to log on. But you did it with, your, with what, what you made. You made it very clear to, to us. And I want to give you Amen. time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, we still have time, you know, and we still have time to, just as um, Antoti said, and just as Sister Jewel said, we're commissioned you know, to do this. We're, you know, we're still um, to be trying to bring people back to the fold, into the fold. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that I, came to mind as you guys were speaking and saying that is that it's up to us to make the attempt to bring people to the Lord, but it's actually the Lord who provides the increase. So mm -hmm. he is the one that actually has the power and the control to do that. And if we appear to fall short of that we shouldn't feel bad because all we're required to do is make the attempt because it is actually mm -hmm. the lord who asks who does the increase and <clears throat> um that's why um it says for those who have a he ear to hear yeah, then you know they should, they should do and, and, and though it's important um that we 
give those who have an ear something to, to hear. Because if we didn't say anything, there would be emptiness. There wouldn't be any encouragement. And we're just the encouragers, not the increasers, you know, the ones who provide the increase. And um, we see all the way to the end that um, there are going to be people who are, their hearts are just hardened. And I know that when I think about people with hard hearts, certain images and or pictures are, of people pop in my head. Mm -hmm. You may have the same um, result when you think about people who have hardened their heart, mm -hmm. but that doesn't make me want to give up on them. It actually encourages me and makes me want to continue on to try to encourage them mm -hmm. because yeah. even though I might have might not have got it on the first time, even though the Lord might not have done it on, on the first time, there's still time. You know, there is still time uh, to repent, just like Uncle Morton, you just said, there's still time for them to repent. Um, we have to burn that midnight oil, <laughs> like Brother Helton mm -hmm. would just say, <laughs> you know, there are um, some that are going to be ready when that time comes and some that are not, you know, some that they're going to be sleeping when they should be working or some that, sh some that, um, just are not prepared mm -hmm. um so it encouraged me to stay prepared and you know there's that old saying that if you stay ready you don't have to get ready yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it applies to, right. to, to to our christian walk if we stay ready we don't have to get ready mm -hmm. so to remain in the word remain in his will in his way you know and working towards becoming who he has purposed us to be is a daily thing he says pick up your cross. We bear our cross daily. So even though we may have accepted Christ, we still have to bear our cross daily. And part of that is trying to be a disciple, like Antonio just said a minute ago, and um, bring people into the fold as, as much as we can. And um, it was mentioned earlier that the truth sometimes hurts. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people just don't want to hear the truth. We can say that the sky is blue and they just like, what? Oh, no, it looked a little purple to me. You know, <laughs> they just don't want to hear the truth, you know, and some people are just like that. And it's not up to us to um, force anyone to believe what we have to say, because it's the Lord that actually adds the increase. And I think that that's something that happened in the past that has scared some people away from being a, from from the from being a Christian is that um it seems like somebody is twisting their arm telling you better do this or you better do that and that's no way to really get a buy-in on anything yes um I, I had to learn that lesson the hard way not that I twisted anybody's arm but I really 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 worked hard to try to convince people to believe what I believe and that, that just doesn't happen. And I learned that um, our salvation uh, or our, our walk can, or not, that's not the word, not our salvation or our walk, but our maturity will come at in, different for everybody. All of us are on different levels of our Christian maturity. And some of us are still drinking milk and some of us eating uh, tomahawk steak, you know, it, it's, it's a <laughs> wide range of maturity levels. Mm -hmm. And it's not wise for us to think that <clears throat> there's just a blanket uh, way of thinking or there's just everybody is going to be on the same level because the Lord, he loves variety. So he made us all different and in different ways, we're all going to, you know, um, live out our purpose. That's right. Um, and, and, you know, when... Um when we had a previous Bible study and we talked about the challenges that are gonna occur, that people are going to possibly starve, won't be able to, that are gonna be challenged into believing or going and following Christ or going and following the Antichrist because they're gonna to wanna to feed their families and knowing if once we, teach or try to teach others of the challenges that they're going to have they're going to have them 
and knowing that even though you are having challenges, eternal life is the end result. And mm -hmm. being able to go through those challenges with the hope that it won't be that way all along forever. What's gonna be forever is everlasting life and making mm -hmm. sure that mm -hmm. they know that and they, they know that the challenges that they're gonna reach and that what they're gonna have. And right. that's what I feel my personal mission is to let people know you're gonna have challenges, you're gonna have the ups and downs, you're gonna have the hard, hard struggles, but have those struggles in the belief that one day they won't be any. That's Come on. That one Come day on. you're gonna have a wonderful, beautiful forever. Mm. Amen. And you know, there's a, a scripture in Romans 8 that says, this current suffering doesn't mm. compare to the future glory that is yeah. in store for us. And exactly. That's what you just exactly. spoke upon. This that's current exactly. suffering, it, it, it don't even compare to that it's future glory that is in store no. for us. And um, yeah, I love that. And that's true. That's, mm. that's, that, those are words to stand up on. Yeah. Yeah. It really yeah. is. And yes. you know, in the, the environment, you know, that I used to work in, your, your mom and you dealing with juveniles, and they coming from a rough background, childhood. But yes. you know, sometimes God placed them in that place to hear that word or give them away from that environment. Yeah. Because a lot of kids I used to see turn into adults, come up and say, you know, thank you for the with y'all for the word, for speaking to us, changing us and I got my own family doing my thing, doing good. And, you know, it just <laughs> as you know, it's good to hear. Yes. You know, yeah. so you know, God, God, you know, this there's hope. You know, mm -hmm. the world you listen on TV, the world makes it seem like all the kids are thugs and they doing right, but there's a lot of kids out there doing right. Yeah. They just ain't yes, sir. just That's magnify right. the negative, not the positive. And the fact that there's so many young people that haven't really heard the word or right. have had people who they look up to see, because God wants us to be the, his mirror. He yeah. wants us to walk out amongst our brothers and sisters and let them see our light. Yes. Yeah. They, they, they need to see our light. One lady walked up to me um, the day before Christmas and I was coming out of work and she told me, she says, how are you? And I said, oh, I am truly blessed. And how are you? She told me, she says, when I spoke to you, I spoke to you because I saw your light. Mm. And I, it just made me break down in tears because I said, well, thank you so much because that's what God wants me to do and to be showing someone else the light yeah. that I have in front of me, inside of me, all around me, that shows him as my savior and him mm -hmm. as my, the who I follow. So thank you. And I know that that's the purpose that he has for us, our group for sure, and every other Christian to be able to be a, to be a light, to show people the light Yes. that we're trying to have them look at and see and believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. And you know, one thing, Bob, you just said something. There are people who, um, uh -oh. that is wonderful, glowing and beautiful. Somebody and that's oh. so amazing. To me, it's just so to be able to be like, Shite. The hello, how are you? God bless you today. That's yep. You know, <clears throat> there, I, I talk about this uh, coworker, and I won't say their name because you know you know this person. But they were we were, they were we were talking, and this was a, years ago, a couple of years ago, and they said, well, "Well, Johnson, how come all the people who are supposed to be bishops and uh, preachers, and you know the 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 the, the people the, in the church?" but they got the nastiest attitudes, right? Mm -hmm. And they, they started naming off people. And I, I was like, you know what? You're absolutely right. So 
we can be a deterrent, but we're supposed to be the light, like you were talking about, in that um, we're supposed to be the ones that they can look at us and then want to have what we have. So for mm -hmm. example, if we're walking around unkept, we're walking around with nasty attitude, if we're walking around looking like, excuse me, looking undesirable, then, and I'm claiming to be one of the Lord's children, they're like, well, I don't want that for myself, you know what I mean? So it's up to us to really be that light. And that can be done on a bunch of different levels and not necessarily by what I'm telling you, but, what, but from what you see in me. W.E.B. Du Bois said, children learn more from you from who you are rather than what you say. You say. Mm -hmm. You know, so who you become speaks more volumes than a thousand words can say. You know, so... We're the light of the world, and that's who the Lord has called us to be. Yeah, I like that. that that's, a, that's a great example. Great example. I want to go back to one thing that uh, Mama Jordan was talking about. And with um, that light. The, 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 with the light working tour. The talking when she was, Mama Jordan was talking about the working poor. And it took me back to when I used to go to the Richmond Mission. And uh, that's when I first, that's where mm -hmm. I started actually my ministry. <laughs> Before I was, stepped in the pulpit, Pastor McKnight sent me on assignment to the Richmond Mission. And I got so much from that because there were people there who literally, families, man and woman both have job, but they mm -hmm. have three children. Right. And they're at the Richmond Mission, not because they weren't working, not because they weren't trying, but because it's difficult. It's uh, um, the median in, in California is $100,000. I mean, excuse me, low, low income is $100,000. Like, you know, uh, for a family of four to make it, you need to be making at least a combined income of around $100,000. So mm -hmm. imagine a person who is going to work every day, doing all that they can, but still falling short. That working poor class is, is like, it's, a, it's, it's growing. And we see it every day under the freeway. Mm -hmm. We see it when we see people sleeping in their cars. Mm -hmm. Those people who yes. we went and served um, on Christmas, for, for Christmas, and served the lunches to Aunt Marvin and, and Mama Jordan. Those, a lot, all those people weren't just um, home, were, were not, um, some of those people had jobs. Some of those people worked. Some of those people, you know, really were trying to make ends meet. Yes. But sometimes the ends just don't meet. Mm -hmm. And we shouldn't throw those people away because we're called to help bring them into the fold. And one of the prayers that I pray is that um, they can really just not look toward another man to try to give them what they need, but look to the Lord because the Lord can supply all of our needs. Mm -hmm. It may yeah. take some time. It may not happen when they want, want it to or how they want it to, but he is capable and able of supplying everyone's needs, mm -hmm. yes. no matter how large or small. Mm -hmm. um, but it's hard to believe. It's hard to see that when you're sleeping in your car or you know what I'm yeah. saying? Or you, 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 you have to send your kid to school without having dinner or having breakfast. Mm. You know what I mean? And you know that that's, that's a difficult thing to do, but yes. if we can encourage them to continue on and to look to the Lord for their needs being supplied, um, yeah. we're doing our part. Yeah. And when and they, they see you coming to them, mm -hmm. when they see you coming to them, they see the Lord in you. Yes. Mm. When you go to, like you were saying, yes. the difference between going to where they are and meeting them on their level. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you don't know how many of those lives you may touch and turn around because you did that one act. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. One little girl asked me, She, I, I gave her a coat. I had a coat. And uh, the someone had given me, and I saw this little girl, and I said, sweetheart, do you like this coat? Is it an old-fashioned coat? She says, no, it's a warm coat. And I said, well, guess what is yours? And she says, why did you give that to me? I said, because God told me to. Mm -hmm. 
If nothing hmm. else, that little girl heard the word God told me to give this to you. And it's something that she needed, something that she liked, and something that I was able to bless her with. And that's what they need to see. Little kids, yeah. adults need to see us do that. Adult need to see us walking down the street and saying, hey, you know what? I got this sandwich in my that I just bought. You want it? And just to let them see that there is a God walking down the street every day that that can will bless you. And let them, if they don't see nothing else, they will see the God in you. Amen. Stepping up, doing that yeah. kindness. And that's that's the purpose that Christians, all of us, you know, can do. No, not everybody has the ability to walk up to a stranger and say, hi, how you doing? You want this? Not everybody has that capability, but somebody can use a service, can you can walk into a service and say, welcome, brother, come on in and have a seat. That's just as much of a kindness. Yeah. You, you know, know, you know I, was literally, I was literally reading this morning in the book of Acts about when um, I think it was Peter and John, they went to the uh, pool and they told the man, silver and gold, I don't have. But I, he, I think he said, if we offer you, yeah, there we go. And, and that's Jesus. real. You know, we may not be mm -hmm. able to give physical gifts all the time, yes. but you know, a, a smile, a kind yes. word, yes, um, a word of encouragement. You know, um, mm -hmm. those things are equally as valuable, and we never know how it can affect uh, affect somebody in yeah. the long run. Exactly. Yeah. And and during the days that are going to be the ch most challenged days, I'm praying that the people that us as believers will go to those who are going to persecute us for believing. They're going to persecute mm. us. They're not going to give us the food or share food. And for us to be hopefully saying to them, it's all right, my brother. I'm going to be okay. Are you yeah. all right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I hope. If it's any time that I'm going to be around, I'm going to say, brother, don't worry. I'm going to be okay. Amen. I'm there going to go. be all right. I hope mm -hmm. you can still have the joy that I have. I mm. hope you can continue to have that joy. I pray that you do. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. it'll make them think, well, how can she be happy and she don't right. have no food? <laughs> because yeah. I'm going to have everlasting life and you're not. Yeah. <laughs> It's called putting a heaping coat on their head. They, they can't oh, comprehend. Oh, that's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> this joy yeah. we had, the world to give, the world can't take it away. Come on, come on, can't come on. Can't take it, can't take it, can't take it. No, no, no this, is, this is joy, this is joy. I would say, and the, and the government has a lot to blame to this, this oh, yes. homelessness okay. too, because, you know, it's a shame that a lot of people, you know, your lady, uh, I'll miss too, she had to quit her job, move to a shelter, and get on government assistance in order to get housing. So, Isn't that awful? So I'm like, you know, and you think you have a two parent home, they make too much money. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, so when they didn't get some type of assistance, but not enough. You have to, and it, then they're pushing single parents, you know, they, you know they're pushing it, the man out. It started with the welfare. The yeah. welfare system started mm. that mentality, and especially because of us as African Americans, because yeah. they wanted to break up our family. Mm -hmm. The most important thing that us as African Americans had was that we had a family, we had yeah. a bond, and we had a mother, father, and children that was so strong that the European people couldn't understand it. That's why they sold off uh, children that had mo single mothers or mothers because they were bred and not ra raised with a husband. When they had their husband, they said, oh, no, no, we can't keep this going on like this. We got to separate this. Mm -hmm. We got to separate it. And it was made to happen like that. And unfortunately, our system still believes that. Yeah. That's the reason why 
they still have in place that a father most of the time cannot be in the family. He cannot be there, even though he is our rock as the man of our family, because that's how we were raised, that the men, the man is the head of the household. They said, no, we don't want that. We don't want that anymore. So to break that up, that's how they did it. And it actually, it actually goes back to the slave days when that's right. You know, that's they, 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 they that. took our name, they took our, it's the, the number one institution that we had is the family. And, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's extended on in, in, in many different ways, you know. Um, exactly. It's, it's all bad. Yep. But they are, they yeah. are part of the, the blame. Um, yeah. yeah. They really yeah. are. They really are. They really are. Well, you know, just to, if, to bring it back uh, to, to, to this lesson, one of the things that I didn't mention, um, but I do think is worth mentioning, is uh, sometime when I talk to people or non-believers, they say, well, especially about Revelation, when I try, because I've been trying to push, not push the book, but encourage people to read the book of Revelation and how it's a, it's not about doom and gloom. It's not only about doom and gloom. But they say, well, yeah. how could a God that's supposed to be a good God, you know, do all those things, you know, to, to, that are going to happen? You know, all that, the, the scary stuff that we, we, we've heard about all those years. Mm-hmm. And I have something to respond to them about now. When before I did, mm-hmm. the response to that is, He's a just God. He is the lion and the lamb. He's not just the lamb. He's not just the one that made the sacrifice, but he is the one who is worthy of of, uh, judging. And had he not gone through what he went through or had he not made those sacrifices, been the lamb, then he wouldn't have earned the right or he wouldn't be worthy of being the lion or the one who uh, brings about Uh, justice and if it was me I'm not worthy because guess what I ain't made the proper sacrifice but Jesus did he did he went all the way even in his last moments he didn't tell another man that to take this cup away but he asked the Lord Lord take this cup away from me because he knew what he had coming but he Mm -hmm. still did it he still followed through because he knew in the end it would be the desired result. So for those non-believers, for somebody who may not want to hear about the book of Revelation, somebody who may ask that question, how could a good God um, allow, you know, that to happen? Well, because he's the lion and the lamb. His Mm -hmm. kindness and his sternness exist. Just like we read about, we just read about mm-hmm. in, uh, I think it's Romans 11. Um, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, Romans 11 and 22, consider therefore the kindness and the sternness of God. And that's just the way it is. And when we look at um, the truth of that, the hard truth of that, that's, that's what this chapter is all about. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. what this chapter is all about. Our truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, truth. Our truth. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's our truth. Yeah. yeah. It, the hard. The truth. The hard. Yeah. Yes. The hard yes. Truth. yes. <laughs> that's hard. But the hard truth enables us to endure hard times, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Because we know the and, problem. And I heard, endurance. I heard yeah. someone say before in a motivational speech. When it gets hard, if life gets hard, do it hard, live hard, you know, <laughs> you know, if, if stand if, up to the challenge, hard, mm-hmm. yeah, we, we can step up and on our own, we can do so, only so good. But when we allow our best to become God's best, mm. supernatural things can happen. And yeah. another verse says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. It doesn't say mm. I can do all things because I made the effort because I'm trying hard enough. No, we can't never try hard enough to do what the Lord can do for us. He can do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond. Mm-hmm. You know. And he can give us the courage and the strength to be able to handle anything. Mm-hmm. 
anything yeah. because that's, and because that scripture said i can do all things through him, through him. yes yeah. <laughs> i can do all things period yeah, through. no yeah. i can do all things through, through him yeah, it's yes. good, you know yeah mm. my 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 Encourage. Right, seems like we're coming to a, a, you have to humble close, yourself and, and admit your weakness. Yes. Uh, yeah, and, then, that, and if we ever have a weak moment or we have a moment when we're not necessarily doubting or when we're having challenging moments, uh, Marva, you actually told me about this verse that I've been kind of like just like keeping mm -hmm. in the forefront of my mind is the, the Psalms 32 and 8. You yeah. said, I will instruct you. I, I will show you what to do. You know, when you're in those moments, when you might have a weak moment or when you have a challenging moment. He's, mm -hmm. I'm, I don't want to paraphrase. Let me look it up. But he says, um, I will I, instruct you. I will, I will, I will guide I will you. you. I will teach you and I will show you the way. It was one of the, one of the versions that I read. Yes. And it says, I will counsel you there with my eye. Mm -hmm. One of the versions said, I will counsel you with my, it was my heart. So I've mm -hmm. seen three different endings, but all of them are saying it's going to be through me. Yeah. Counsel yeah. will come. And the Lord gave that to me when I was, I woke up, mm -hmm. George, George can tell you, I woke up with uh, extreme cloudiness and couldn't log on to Sunday school because the screen was just white. I couldn't see any of the letters. Mm -hmm. And that, so that scripture keeps coming to me in instances, instances like that. And I, I try to, as my niece says, Tia, write it on the tablet of your heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I may have done some paraphrasing too, but it, that little scripture has brought me through much yeah. in the last yeah. few weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it keeps, it keeps uh, bouncing in my spirit too. <laughs> <laughs> my my yeah. sister says, courage, your courage, your courage. Your courage is amazing. Mm -hmm. If you could write a book, I, it would be a bestseller because <laughs> in being encouraged and showing courage and showing faith no matter what is what is just amazing, just amazing to you. But you know, to be, to be very transparent, um, I go through a lot of weak moments, but I'm, I'm with a, a uh, support group Mm -hmm. sometimes I can get on there and start out having a weak moment and there are all of those people yeah. walking the same journey that I'm walking and before yeah. long we're walk, we're laughing and talking and talking about the Lord and you know God. those who God. are believers and so he has sent me to those places and those things keep me going but I can be the biggest coward I'm gonna tell you <laughs> when a yeah. change comes and suddenly you see it in your face and you say oh my gosh I'm not gonna get through this one but he does it <laughs> because yeah. your strength is your shine. You you glow, you glow, yeah. you really glow, and mm -hmm. you see your light. You glow. Well, that's God, that's yeah. God. that's God. Mm -hmm. yes, it is, mm -hmm. and that's the strength that He gives you to to the courage yeah. to do that, and you encourage others that are around you. Mm -hmm. The blessing. Yes. And I hate to break this. I just have to say, there's someone amongst us that wrote a wonderful book. Does everybody know about that wonderful book? Yeah. Yes. Amen. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're too kind. I'm so blessed. So very blessed. I'm going to share one book with someone that I know. I'm going to tell her that this was meant for her to read. And um, I've had it for a week now, and I just need to give it to her. I feel bad that I haven't given, her, given it to her yet, uh, but I talk about it and start reading from it. <laughs> I need mm -hmm. to give her her own. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, my sister. It's amazing. Amen. Thank you. You're too kind. No, I'm just so blessed this... to be able yes. to have it. Amen. To Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Yes. Yes. And I'm anxiously awaiting for the um, workbook. For Exodus. For the workbook. <laughs> oh, oh, the workbook. Oh, yeah. The workbook. Yes. Yeah. I'm waiting for the workbook. Yes. Yeah, the workbook is out. 
and I'm working on Exodus now and the workbook for Exodus. Oh, wow. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. you I will say that it's a good start to the to the new year. We, we're back in action. You know, yeah. We're back yeah. in motion. And um, yes, thank you guys for taking out this time. I know, um, you know, it's the, the enemy is a lie. He tried to get me knocked out. He tried to I exclude me from tonight, but <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> he didn't win. <laughs> he didn't win. We got back on. Amen. There you go. Yeah, hallelujah. I appreciate yeah. everybody's encouraging words. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and I look forward to continuing this study. I really do. I really look mm -hmm. forward to uh, the rest <clears throat> of this study. Yes. Um, yes. I guess this, the, do we have more comments? I do want to um, ask for a special prayer right now. Because, um, I, Mom, I was actually going to ask you to open with prayer. So I'm going to ask you to take this out in prayer today. But within that, um, I wanted to make mention that our, my Uncle Ron, He's in need of prayer right now. He had um, a, he had to, uh, he's back home from the hospital, but we still want to hold him up in prayer um, as he's recovering from um, the ailment that he had. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to hold uh, Ron Turner up in, your, in our prayers tonight and um, as we have our own personal prayer uh, throughout the week. We want to hold Ron Turner up. Thank you. I'll let him know. For yes. sure. All righty. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone on the earth that we will see the amazing light that you have given all of us and that we take the light that you've given us to shine in those who don't see a light, don't have a light, or don't know about the light. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that every day that we walk, that we walk in the footsteps that you've left us to follow, that you give us the encouragement and the knowledge and the, the aptitude to go forth to follow your steps. Yes. Yeah. Please, dear Heavenly Father, this new year is going to be a year that we are going to forever shine as every year that you've given us because we're still here. We're still here glorifying everything that you've offered us, yes, everything yes. that you've given us, everything that has encouraged us to know that we have everlasting life, that our life will be forever because we know and believe that you are the light you are the glory that we follow in our heart you have given us time and time again examples of your presence examples of your love dear heavenly father we see it we know it we believe it yes. encourage us every day to show yes, others God. that light Yes, to yes. show others that glory that we're going to feel and know when we pass on that we are going to be able to live in abundance of yes. everything and that we could show right now the abundance of the love that you have for all of us. Yes, yes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Each and every one of the people that are right now listening to this. And my dear brother, your illness, God has you in his yes. hands. Yes. Brother Turner, you are going to feel his strength as yes. all of us are praying right now for your health. And your Hallelujah. Strength. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you we give it him to you, knowing yes, that Lord. you are going to give him strength and you're yes. going to show him and let him feel the love that we're yes, putting out God. towards him. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. 
I thank you for the blessings of having the people that are listening right now, my sisters and brothers, that love you. you, Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Love all of you. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We love you. We love you. Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you for that powerful prayer. And yes. Thank you guys so much for tonight. Yes. Uh, I, I feel good. Mm-hmm. It took a two week hiatus, but that woo, I ain't mm-hmm. had that like that, that feeling in the world, you know. And, mm. and, and it feels good. It really does feel yes, good. Does. And I appreciate um, everybody's right. energy. You know, uh, and Toti said it before: we're apart, but we're close. <laughs> we're yeah. far apart but we're close and i feel yeah. that closeness that oneness that uh we've had going uh during this entire study and um i appreciate it i appreciate it thank you guys so much right one quick announcement mm-hmm. um your new alameda county superior court judge was mm-hmm. sworn in this morning tamiza stone yeah Yes, one of my best mm-hmm. friend's daughter. All right. Wow. wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. since she was about five years old when the kids were all little in the Allen Temple uh, Children's Choir. Wow. wow. Really. Yeah. Awesome. And I'd like to add, I, I, I just wish her the best and the glory and the love that she has, hopefully, and the training from being from Allen Temple that she'll be able to see the strength that she has and the encouragement that she could give those kids when they come before her and when those adults come before her, yes. that she'll be able to, to reflect positively on knowing the environment they came from and put a, a hand, a stern hand on letting them know that they can't get away with everything. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm also asking, uh, for your encouragement. Um, I made the decision today to put in my application for um, the juvenile hall commissioner. I haven't even told my son Mm. yet. (laughs) But I realized that as a staff person, I saw the power that they have and I saw the good that they could do if they would understand how hard it is sometimes to make what the rules are happen. So I'm hoping that I would be able to be an instrument to show that commission the real and not the fake, the hard work and the due diligence that the staff does and how they do it. And to Mm -hmm. give the face of what they need to see and not what they are sitting up there looking through rose colored glasses. We don't have rose colored Mm. glasses when we're in there trying (laughs) to make things happen in the unit. When a kid wants to kick you in the face or kick you in the private parts and wanna cuss you out every five minutes. We need Mm. somebody who has been through that to know the truth. So I'm asking for prayers, please, yes. to help me through that. Amen. And to Amen. hope that I'm making the right decision to do it. Mm-hmm. Amen. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. son, I didn't tell you first. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's all good. All right. It's all good. All right. Thank you guys so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mission. Amen. Well, you guys have a good night and you enjoy the rest of this e- afternoon, this evening. Oh, yeah, this evening. The rest of this evening. And you guys, uh, until we until we meet again, may God bless you and may peace and love follow you and be Amen. Uh, all around you and in you. Amen. And all don't right. forget your assignment. No frogs. <laughs> don't forget your assignment. That's your assignment? Mm. Hop on, frogs. Hop on. There you go. <laughs> yes, yes. Good night, right. everybody. Good, good night. night. Good night. Guys. Have a blessed good evening. Bye. Good, good morning. Too. Blessed Love. evening. All right. Love you guys. Love, Love you too. too. Right.
Love you. Okay, I can't find that thing. There it is. There it is. The Lord. 